All right, at the top of the show, Yami had also talked about what should be happening. And I want, to, I want to get your perspective on that, especially with the communities now. Because we've heard a lot of stories, we don't know how true they are, about, you know, the fact that some villages hide these people, they know who they are. Also, it was also the same with Boko Haram, the Boko Haram issue, and even the militancy issues, that these communities know who these people are, you know. Culturally, and I don't know if, if it, there's a religious angle to it, but what should we start doing as Nigerians? Because, I mean, obviously, this is not something that we can come anyway for government because it looks like not a lot is going to be happening from there. But as communities now, what should we be doing? Well, first of all, what, what we should be doing is to do away with generational hatred that we have taken upon ourselves over the years where we are hating another tribe just because it's another tribe. We should focus on the fact that we are human beings and that should be foremost. And also on the fact that whatever it's wrong, it's wrong, irrespective of who it is that is perpetrating it. If we start from that angle, it will help a lot. But over the time, Nigeria, like I, 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 I normally would say, it's a country that has been producing serial killers over the years. What do I mean by this? From 1992, when I think as, as oh, a young adult, I was about 19 then, where there were a lot of killings across Nigeria, and then nothing would be done about it. Riots would happen, people would be killed, Nigerians would move, but the government would not uh, do anything, anything about it. And so people that had killed, they were not prosecuted, and they lived amongst the community. What does that say? They will go on to kill again and again and again. Like Yami did say, even somebody with still 500 naira, the next thing they will put fire on the person's neck, they will burn the person. And it, we will seem to think it's okay. You will see people trying to justify it. What goes on? Those same people that we kill tomorrow. We had a situation where uh, five Fulani men were pulled out of a car in, in, in a busy motor park and they were burnt just because they are Fulanese. Because and those people, they are known, they, nothing has been done. We saw an issue of Madame Bridget in Kano that was killed by people. Those people live amongst us. So all over Nigeria, we have this case of criminals being, uh, being, being, being shielded by community because they feel, oh, okay, they did it to us. It's not sort of like revenge or repressor uh, attack. There are no repressor attacks as far as I'm concerned. I grew up in a community where somebody then would say to you, you two had no job that please, can you borrow me 500 naira? The next riot, I'm going to kill you. So for most of them, riots, they are businesses. Those people who are said to have done repressor, they are just criminals who over the time, wherever there's a little bit of issue within the community or anywhere else, they will come out and begin to attack people, stop uh, uh, vehicles, burn people, kill people, steal their goods. They first of all steal. I was just reading reports in the newspaper. They will first of all steal and sack the houses before uh, uh, killing the people and burning down the buildings. That, in no way, it's, 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 we cannot call that a repressor act. That is a criminal act that the state needs to come that out. But of course, there's no justice in Nigeria. And where there's no justice, you can't expect peace. I'll come back to you, Aishana. Let me, let me come to you now, Yemi, now, because I'm trying to see if we can get some sort of headway in all of this. I mean, we've talked about, you know, the communities. But with government now, do you see, do you see a sense that, you know, going forward, this may sort of maybe be the trigger they need to do better? Some people have said maybe they thought that the security sort of apparatus would have been changed completely to bring in maybe people with a different thinking or approach to this. Do you see that happening? I don't, actually, because there's no sign. With every attack there's been a call made that maybe it's time to rethink um, people at the head of our security apparatus um, when we hosted the nigeria day of mourning on 28th it was one of the calls that look if we have challenges with how these things are being managed and the outcome shows that it's not being managed satisfactorily maybe it's time to change the people who are in charge of it i saw a news recording um, a news post this morning um, that the senate is actually now calling for incapable security chiefs to be replaced so but there's no there's no yet sign that those hard actions are going to be taken but i wanted to following from dm yes. wanted to sort of re-emphasize the point aisha made that yes there might be economic issues cultural issues ethnic issues that are causing sort of fundamental misunderstandings but then you then layer that on people who are opportunists and then take advantage of the fact that because i don't like you well let's use that to cause more harm and nigeria if I'm not mistaken, the West Africa uh, sub-region has the highest number of small arms. So these small arms are with people. And that again goes back to your point about the role of government and sort of what is a plan for the army, what role the communities play in it. Um, because if people know that I can hide under this to basically just wipe out people for whatever reason, yeah. and there are no consequences, 
in Central Africa. I, th I think that is the biggest part of the yeah. entire thing. If I that nothing ever really happens, yeah. or if something happens, there's just one in like a thousand people who yeah. gets who gets used as an example and everybody moves on. But I want to come to you now about the arts now. And you know, I, when it happened uh, with the Play Two issue in particular, you know, I remember people sending me DMs. Oh, Ibuka, you've not posted anything, you know. What sort of responsibility do you think, you know, with the kind of role you are, either with filmmaking or just the fact that, you know, you're someone who people sort of know and recognize and your colleagues in the industry, do you think that it's really, it's, it, we, we will be effective or more effective or make more, much more of a difference when people like you speak up on, and challenge government? And how do you even do that in a case like this? I, I, I hear you. Um, talking as a public figure, um, first of all, I believe that it's irresponsible for you to spread information that you are not 100% sure about. Very true. So I would not go on social media and start putting up pictures that would only just cause more grief, more anger, more hatred. I'm not going to do that. I might talk about things like when I saw um, EIE Nigeria post stuff about um, uh, the march, the walk is going to yeah. go on. I reposted that immediately. This is something that we should be a part of because I'm in the public space. It, whatever I put out there, more people can, can hear. And I think that's a responsibility that everybody who is in entertainment or who's a public figure you know, should take on. You know? let's, let's find ways to get all our followers and all our fans and, um, and get them to follow a cause, identify the causes that they should be following and, and share that with them. But on a, on a more practical note, um, a director, an Hollywood director, Ni Akimala and I, um, we're talking... Um, you know, from the conversation, he, you know, we, I seen what he had done. We had a conversation with EIE, and we started talking privately, and we realized there's there's much more that we can do. So we sent out a message to to friends and people in in the industry, and we were thinking maybe we can get 10, 15 people to show up and do some videos just to bring awareness. It's an awareness campaign, and over 50 people showed up. And I'm talking, these are major Nollywood names. You know, coming up, because I think we've gotten to the point where we are all really just frustrated, and we realize that we we can't say it again because this is another tribe, another religion. Another, we're all human beings, and we're all Nigerians. You know, you see how in Nollywood everybody works together because it's economically viable. We're working together towards a, a specific goal. If we had the same thing going across Nigeria, if if the issues that we had economically are, are fixed. That's one of the very many things are fixed. We believe that people would live you know, more peaceably amongst them or with one another. All right, we'll take a quick break now and come back and try and round up the conversation and hopefully we get, I mean, we're getting some direction, I think. Uh, we'll hopefully just get better direction around this. Up. We'll be right back. Now it is my time. 